Hey guys, it's it's been a while. I don't know which camera to look at. This is weird. We have three of them now. We do Either have three. of the lenses you can see. Oh yeah. Well, maybe I want to look at the one I can't, Eden. Well, some things that you want to do, you shouldn't. All right. Well, anyway, hi guys. My name's Aiden Mattis, and you're watching the Weird Bible Podcast for the first time in nearly a year. So I have disappointed everyone in the room in the first 45 seconds, which you know is how most things, including my graduation and probably my wedding, will go. At least you made it. At least I made it here. You know, I I did make it to graduation. Um, but wedding's a strong assumption. Wait, are you? It's, just saying. This is cruel. This eight, is cruel. Eight to ten years. I hope, my, I hope my wedding goes better than Samson's first one. I will say that. That's true. Which, speaking That's of, true. is what we're talking about today. It is. That was good. That was a good segment. Wow. wow. Were you setting that up on I purpose? I was not. That was pretty yeah. good. All See, right. what I typically do is I just kind of let the nonsense run until I find a place to fix it. All right. Well, on that note, everybody, today, oh, again, welcome back to the Weird Bible Podcast. As my debatably co-host said, it has been a while... <laughs> My alleged co-host. My alleged co-host. Uh, <laughs> it has been a while. Um, mainly, uh, my, my fault on my end, uh, just where I've been moving, starting a bunch of new projects and stuff like that. Uh, it has been hard for me to commit to stuff, but now that I'm settled, I'm in a place I can start planning more projects and things like that, or at least projects that you all can see right away, like podcasts, uh, we figured we want to revamp it, get back on the row. And what a better way to start that than doing a live show, right? Yeah. Doing it, or not a live show, like, it's live for us. It's live for us, yeah, you know. In an the In-person flesh. show, yeah. Yes. So an in-person show to kick us off, and I believe the plan after this is to get back on the grind of, with yeah. it, right? Yeah, Doing, like, live shows. Live um, shows as much as possible. So everything was my fault, uh, as much as I would love to blame Aiden for it, not you, you can do no wrong, but you. Uh, You're a star. As, as much as I'd like to blame him for it. Uh, it's it's my fault, been on my end, but we're revamping it back up, and hopefully you all enjoy. And we want to kick off with a very weird one today, um, that's interesting but weird, and that's the story <laughs> of Samson. Yeah, I I actually thinking back, this might be one of the earliest Bible stories I personally remember. I, don't know I, about I think for a lot of people it is, because there's like there's stories that get I guess kind of cherry picked from the Old Testament that get told in like Sunday school yeah. to kids. Because it's easy to get like the the morality of it across. Like it's, right. it's hard to explain to children stuff like you know Eli and his sons, how how they were men of God but also went astray and they were kept in the temple and stuff. There's a lot of nuance, right? But ones like this, or ones like Noah's Ark, or ones like uh, the, the walls of Jericho, right? Yeah. Basic messages of you follow God. This happens. Uh, you do this thing, this happens. If you do wrong, this happens. Are pretty easy to get across to kids. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes in our memory we oversimplify it yeah. because we, like for example, the story we're going to be looking at today is normally chalked up as just um, do good thing, good thing happen, do bad thing, yeah, yeah bad thing happen. But there's a lot more nuance to that that I think is worth a look back. So I thought it'd be a good one for a, yeah. a kick off. And I think even, even for people who just aren't really that familiar with the Bible, it's an interesting story to dive into because like the general consensus of what it, the story is, I feel like in pop culture in general, is just long hair cut, no strong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Which is why your hair is so long right now, is your, yep. your you know, cultivating mass. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, I, it's not, it's not visible, <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's the cultivation process. It's getting there. Yeah, it's yeah, getting yeah. there. I'm bulking. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm spiritually bulking at the yeah. moment. I'm spirit maxing. Spiritually <laughs> spirit maxing. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I think a good place to start, though, with this actually is, you know, you're, you're the, the one who is least a Bible scholar amongst us. What do yes. you remember about the story of Samson? Right, so that doesn't even come from, you know, the Catholic pre and, like, you know, kindergarten to fourth grade that I had. It's really just, like, the kind of colloquial story of it was a, uh, you know, bi biblical story of a man who had great strength and who had luscious locks. And at one point, uh, I can't remember who he was captured by, or at one point there was somebody who was, like, you know, upset chopped all his hair off when he was essentially imprisoned, uh, and he was incapable of, you know, any of these feats of strength that he had at once been capable of until his hair grew back. Now, here's the thing. I'm not even totally sure that's accurate to the story. You're pretty close. It wasn't, like, the prison warden or anything. It was his girlfriend. That's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there, Delilah. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Make it a pop culture. What's it like reference? in Gaza City? Yeah, there we go. See? Yeah, it worked. The, the syllables worked so out. So anyway, the, the story... I had a thing to say. I was going somewhere good with it. Are you regretting this already? I am. Oh, okay. Ma mainly being alive. <laughs> uh, 
But no, so me too. What what <laughs> I wanted you, what I wanted you. to say is that's that is very solid. That is, I think the the way most people remember it mm. is you know, Samson is man with long hair. Long hair was gift from God. Strength was gift from God. Do not do not give up long hair. Do not give up strength. Uh, he is. There's a little bit more to it. It's a little bit more specific. Uh, and there are some parallels actually with the Christ story in the New Testament because. I, uh, once again, we have a situation as with, uh, Abraham and Sarah, where an angel of the Lord comes down and tells the, the barren woman, you will bear a son and the son will serve God. Uh, and in this case, I believe the term is he's a, a Nizarite. Uh, I can look right now. It's either a Nizarite or a Nazarite. And there's a certain man of Zora, the Noah, family oh. of the Danites. Yep. Before we dive too deep into the details real quick of this story, where it contextually in the Bible does this sit? Oh, yeah, good point. So, basically, uh, there's a lot of debate around exact Old Testament dates and stuff like that. It kind of depends on what kind of timeline you're going with. The main thing that people debate is like the Exodus out yeah. of Egypt, because depending on when that is, you can pace everything out from yeah. it. Because after that event, the Bible's like, and then 40 years happened here, then 30, then 40. So you can see it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. uh, it's generally believed that the time period of the judges was like 350 years. So context for uh, everyone watching. Children of Israel get led out of Egypt. We all know that. Moses parts the Red Sea. Joshua, mm -hmm. all that. That happens. Uh, Moses dies, Joshua takes over as leader. Joshua leads, I think it's for 50 years? Sounds right. Something like that. When Joshua dies, he says that the people of Israel, I mean, this is, Joshua says, God is telling Joshua to say this, he's the mouthpiece for it. Joshua says that the people of Israel will not be like all the other nations, they won't just have a king and politics. Instead, God will be their ruler. But, if there ever comes a time that someone needs to rise up and basically fix their problems for them, the problems that the people of Israel bring upon themselves, then there will be an appointed figure to do that. And these figures were judges. Hence the name, they were given power for a time to judge Israel or to save them or what have you. Whatever the specific need was. A lot of the famous judges is like Gideon. Uh, people are familiar with him. Some argue Joshua was the first judge, which sure, debatably. Um, there's like, um, Deborah, mm -hmm. uh, who led the army, people like that, right? Yeah. Uh, and Samson is one of these judges, probably the most famous judge. Gideon is Jericho, right? No, Gideon was the, no, Jericho was gone. Joshua destroyed Jericho. Okay, Joshua's Jericho. Uh, G Gideon was the one who was the boy, the child, and then had them go out and he mm -hmm. eventually whittled down to 300 men and they blew the right. trumpets. And I think it was the Philistines, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think it was the trumpets that had him mixed up on that Yeah, one. you're right. They both yeah. did involve trumpets. That's true, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I was like, wait involved, a second. They both involved surrounding <laughs> yeah. something and blowing trumpets. I, I yeah. knew trumpets were involved in some that's way. True. If this were an true. ancient aliens podcast, we'd be so off the rails right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We aren't off the rails? No, this is completely on the rails, in Fair fact. Enough. Yeah. So far. Yeah. Um, I mean... Give it a minute. I'm staying. not turn yet. Okay, listen. Uh, what I was what I was gonna say is that just in in terms of the dating, I don't want to before we get too far off of it. Um, you know, looking at the historical account, it's it's much the same. We're confident as historians and archaeologists that King David was ruling Israel the year one thousand BC. Yes. Um, yeah. It's before that that things are a little bit funky. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that and like historically, that that's the timeline I go with, and it matches up. Because if you say that, so the last judge was Samuel. Mm -hmm. uh, Samuel came to power, and that's when the people of Israel said, we want a king, we want to be like all the other nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Samuel reluctantly allows them to have one, because that's what they choose, and then that's when Saul steps into the picture. So that's believed to happen around, or at least Samuel's reign, around like 1,050, yep. in my timeline at least. So that makes sense, 50 years from Samuel to David mm -hmm. taking on charge or whatever. So actually, we can date the story of Samson to around 1100 BC, yep. 1100, 1110, something like that. Uh, so this is only like 50, 60 years before Saul shows up. Yeah. Um, so this is near the end of the judges. Uh, it's not the, he's not the last judge. Samuel yeah. was the last judge, but it's pretty close. So it would be, yeah, the end, I, I mean, if, so if Samuel is, when does Samuel take over as judge? Is it around, I, th I think it's around 1050, maybe yeah. 1040. So I think that would mean yeah. that Samson would have. Does it go? 
Does it go Samson directly to Samuel? I think. Or is there? I there's think, a time lapse. I think Micah is in between. Yeah, Micah is in between. And then um, there's like, I think there there's a couple judges that were there yeah. for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> like because Samson's like twenty one. years. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's so, all thing is like tracing it back. A little yeah. Bit. Yeah. So it's it's like uh, th there was one or two in between, but yes, it's very close to the time of Samuel. So this yeah. is near the end of the time of Judges, but we're still in the time of Judges. So what that means contextually is that God is still like to be the ruler of the people, still to decide for them, which is the reason the children of Israel were so prosperous. They managed to be like the least military established or land established in the region mm -hmm. and were still so well off for mm -hmm. so long until they mess up and God effectively allows them to get what they're asking for like he did with the kings and whatnot. Yeah, that's like, immediately before Samson is. He's like, ah, well, you know, you guys kind of messed up. Philistine well, time. Think about it this way. Like when the Exodus happens, which is going off of our timeline... 300 years before Samson. Mm -hmm. When the Exodus happens, there are regions, tribes, the Philistines, the Ammonites, Moabites, all that, who are out in the desert who have been building a civilization for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of freed slaves show up yeah. and plant a flag. And if it wasn't for God's hand on them, they would get, you know, they'd get destroyed, mm -hmm. they'd get uh, completely turned into bondage. There's times when they keep messing up and God allows them to be into bondage, yep. and this story actually opens with such a case. Uh, but they are never wiped out because of that hand of protection that they have. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, the reason that they they need a judge, they need something like this, because they're effectively so late to the game of civilization, of showing up into the region like mm -hmm. this. Um, so the story actually opens with that. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to add before we get into Yeah, just really quick to give the broader context of what's going on here. This is the... the uh, the period immediately after the Bronze Age collapse. Mm -hmm. So in terms of just the broader Mediterranean, Egypt, uh, the Levant, Southern Anatolia, where Turkey currently is, all of that is going through a period of massive upheaval. There have been famines, kingdoms have fallen, kingdoms have risen. So you're really, the Israelites, in a way, you, I mean, to take it from a, a biblical perspective, you could even make the argument that God kind of sent the turmoil to give Israel the opportunity to mm -hmm. rise up from the ashes. But this period of time is, I mean, we're talking about like the fall of Rome level yeah. of yeah. civilizational collapse. Uh, so there is, the entire world is extremely violent. Mm -hmm. The Philistines are likely also somewhat newcomers onto the stage. Mm -hmm. We believe that they were probably a mix of Mycenaean Greeks and Canaanites, mm -hmm. uh, and then possibly other groups that escaped from Egypt because Egypt was keeping a lot of people hostage. Yep. It's, a, it's also around this point that, like, the Canaanites disappear from the record and the Philistines show up. Uh, the Yeah, so this is where you start in the, to see... Like, biblically. Yeah, yeah biblically like, is the where story, they stop... Yeah. yeah, they stop talking about the... Because the Canaanites, I mean, what's interesting is they become, following the Bronze Age collapse, we start to refer to them as Phoenicians. Yeah. Um, and these are the people who will go and found Carthage mm -hmm. and all of these cities in Spain and who will possibly explore as far north as Britain... Um, so these, I mean, we're talking like before the Greeks are yeah, yeah, doing yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, so the Canaanites kind of take to the sea. Yeah. The Philistines on the other hand seem to come into the scene and they show up and this is like what we look at with, uh, with David mm -hmm. is that he's fighting against these guys. They are a strong military power. They're well organized. They seem to be decentralized. We see that the Lords of the Philistines in this book will act as a collective rather yeah. than the king yeah. of the Philistines. <clears throat> they worship Dagon as their mm -hmm. primary deity. And so they become, this is where the Philistines, I think, really become the chief enemy, is this period yeah. between yeah. Uh, settling down in Israel mm -hmm. around 1200 BC, and you see this period of 100 years where they just start to wallop the Israelites over and over again. And the only thing coming between Israel, as you said, and complete annihilation is the hand of God. Yeah, yeah, because logistically they, they have no chance. They don't right? have the man. But it keeps happening. I mean, like, think about, if we are saying David comes to power like a thousand, right, then it's like, it's like 60 years after mm -hmm. this that David and Goliath happens. Yeah. So that's a point where the, <laughs> the Philistines literally have giants, mm -hmm. uh, trademark, uh, mm -hmm. they literally have, like, giants in battle and then God's like, I'll give this 12-year-old the power yep. to kill it, right? Stuff like that. Some real age mythology stuff right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there, there, there's a... 
the, this, and uh, honestly, that's what's so interesting about the judges. Some people have that question of like, okay, well, why is God giving an individual the power? Why is God this stuff? And it, uh, it speaks greater to like my ideas of the Bible as a whole that God allowed, God gave us free will originally and he allows mm -hmm. us to act on ourselves. So yep. as much as possible, God avoids taking our agency from us. If we want something, we can get it for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. So, and that's interesting regarding this specific case mm -hmm. because that from birth. Yeah. So that, that specifically relates to Samson. Yeah. And in a broader sense, I think with a lot of the judges, rather than kind of taking the entire people's power away from them and just deciding what track they'll be on, a single follower of God is given the opportunity to do such and the people are allowed to carry on as mm -hmm. is. It speaks to greater themes of divinity, grace, yep. whatnot. Um, but basically, the, the point of the judges is to be a, uh, a speaker for God during whatever time's happening. Mm -hmm. And what's also really interesting is a lot of the time, uh, judges are specifically what the people of Israel need at the time. So, yep. for example, when Gideon was selected to be the judge, it was during a time when most of the men were dead in the war. Most of the men were cast out or away on the battlefield, so God took a child. During the time of Deborah, again, most of the men are dead, so God picked a woman. Uh, th th like that happens throughout, like God sees whatever needed for the job, and here with Samson, we have a time where uh, Israel doesn't have an army, so God gives one man the strength of an army yep. to be able to take it. Uh, so, yeah, it, it speaks to a lot of things, but we'll get into that. Uh, do we want to go ahead and start? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is give the, give the context and let's go into yep, it. So that's where we're at, and uh, the story of Samson takes place between Judges chapter 13 to chapter 16. The whole book of Judges is the recounting of the Judges during that 350 year span-ish. Uh, so 13 through 16 is Samson's story. And it opens and says, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, which a lot of these stories start that way. Yeah. There's been a period of peace, and then they either want war, or they stop following God, what have you. It is, it, the eventual culmination is they want to be like every excuse me, like everyone else, so they yeah. ask for a king, but right here we have a step before that. Uh, it's a little frustrating, because the Bible doesn't really give you, like, good... You know how you're watching Spongebob, and it's like, c'est vrai, elle is l'éteil, you know? <laughs> the Bible does not do that for mm -hmm. you. It just kind of goes, thing happens, yeah. and then sometime later. And it does make sense, on because, like... On some occasions, it yeah, does. On, on some <laughs> occasions, it does. It does make sense here, because it's a historical record, right? So it's someone describing what happens, um... One of, one of the king's ship. I think, actually, Judges might have been pinned under David or, like, under scribes. I forget the timeline for it. Or that would it be the most pinned. likely. Based on the way it's written, uh, David would be probably the earliest date that you yeah. would see Judges. No, not that, I don't yeah. think David wrote specifically. I think it was, like, it oh, yeah, was I'm saying like under, David, uh, yeah. under David. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's a historical record. Mm -hmm. So, it's, like... Children of Israel did evil, now into scene, right? And from the descriptions we've got earlier, normally this evil partook of worshipping false gods, um, uh, worshipping idols or whatever, um, getting into wars they shouldn't have been getting into, enacting laws they shouldn't have been, stuff like that, right? Yeah. So anyway, it says, The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Again, Children of Israel are given a very, very powerful get-out-of-jail-free card with God's protection. Yep. So God has his hand of protection over them, and they keep, like, biting against it. So occasionally God goes, okay, <laughs> do, go ahead, do what you want. Okay, is, is that what you want yep. now? And, then it, it, and that, again, speaks to God's mercy that he always comes back. The protection always returns. But if people keep saying over and over again, we want you gone, eventually God will say, okay, if you want me gone, I'll be gone. And then it's like, oh, look, a civilization that just showed up in the desert doesn't fare well against all these empires. Funny how that works. Um, but again, we have another circumstance of that happening. So during this time, uh, Israel's effectively under the dominion of the Philistines. You could think of them as like a conquest, yeah. so to speak, by the Philistines. Uh, and the Philistine people, as has been established in the Bible up until this point, are not a righteous people. Not only do they worship Dagon, but that entails things like human sacrifice, bloodletting, a lot of uh, their their bonds of family required women to be a lot more um, offered as gifts, basically to men who would ask of them stuff like that. There, there was there's a good reason that um, God wanted them to stay away from the Philistines in their actions. Uh, so having the Philistines as rulers over them entails a lot more than just being controlled. It's also the the wickedness that is controlling you. Yeah. So. Anyway, it says that he's delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. And there's a certain man of Zorah, 
and I'm not going to read all of this, but I'll read some of the setup. <laughs> uh, there was a certain man of Zora of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. So there's an Israelite, a uh, family of the Danites. He's part of the people under control of the Philistines, one of the children of Israel, and his wife couldn't have a child. And it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. So an angel appears before. It says in the later verses that uh, she doesn't even realize it's an angel at first yep. until eventually the man says, make a sacrifice to God, and they make an altar and burn, um, uh, I think it's a goat. Yep. And as they're burning it, uh, the man, the stranger, steps into the fire yep. and disappears. And that's when they're like, oh, that was an angel. And they yeah. realize the gravity of what had happened. Manoah freaks out. Yeah, Mano <laughs> Manoah thinks that, yeah, Manoah is actually like, oh, we're going to die. He yeah. says, we've seen God, surely we'll be yeah. killed. Mm. Uh, and his wife comforts him and is like, no, did you remember what he said, that we're to have a child, that we, we will have a son. Um, so anyway... Basically, the angel tells the woman, you're going to bear a son, and he is going to deliver your people. He is to be the judge, effectively, to get Israel out of this. However, there's some caveats to that. During this time, Israel is under control of a very unrighteous, ungodly people. So, your son is going to be the exception to that. He is going to be a Nazarite from the womb, he says. That means he's to follow all of the rules that were preset, laid out through the book of Leviticus, through the early times of the children of Israel. That means... As he specifically laid out, no razor shall touch his head, uh, never cut his hair. That means he's to not of eat of any unclean thing. No wine. Uh, no wine. No wine. It's uh, the other, the, the unclean thing mm -hmm. as defined in Leviticus is like dead things, blood, shellfish. Cloven hoof. Cloven hoofed animals, stuff like that. He's to follow all of the rules mm -hmm. that the Nazarites are supposed to because he's going to be the example that everyone yeah. else is to look at. When you say dead things, just for context, does that mean like dead like an animal that was you know killed or yeah. died for a purpose not of yeah you, you can carry carry got it yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you can you can eat meat yeah you, you can eat meat that, that that but you don't eat roadkill right exactly. you don't eat something you found that was dead basically got and it. a lot of these rules when you think about the actual science that we have today make a lot of sense that's I've, is, I've always argued that yeah. Yeah. god is yeah. just protecting his people from Food poison. Yeah, right. yeah. I've I've always thought that. So in the time before science, they were ordered not to eat of swine, blood, dead animals, shellfish, etc. Right. So I've always looked at that as, oh well, this is a uh, because it says in Leviticus to live long, healthy life, follow yeah. these laws, and then the other laws are things about don't cut yourself, don't tattoo, like don't tattoo yourself. Which keep in mind, tattooing at the time was like, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. It was like like literal like needles on the end of like a. Uh, you know, a nail, and you're yeah. hammering it in. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's a bunch of rules like that that I've always seen as just, like, safety guidelines, yeah. basically, right? But God wants you to take care of yourself. So at the same time, while it is a safety guideline, I think that's why they're set up that yeah. way, it is also a rule. Even if it doesn't kill you one time, you're still exactly. going against the rules to do it. It's kind of like when your parent tells you not to, like, uh, like d don't touch an electric outlet, right? And then you sarcastically walk up and touch one. It's like... It's, you're so not your in trouble. So remove all of the plating and expose the wires. It, we were so close. We I, were I'm trying to make the analogy. I'm saying, well, the, <laughs> I'm saying you're not in trouble because you didn't get shocked. You're in trouble because you're doing a dangerous yeah. thing that could get you shocked. It's, you know, same idea. And that was my point. Was yes. like, it, they go and they, yeah, so they break the rules and God goes, okay. Okay, yes. Eventually, God's like, here, you want to see what an electric outlet does? Here, go ahead, do yeah, it. And, ine and inevitably, they do it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the Sometimes way he has to get the car battery, but that's a whole different scenario. <laughs> <laughs> but the way you phrased that was like, that was a personal experience. <laughs> no. Like, like, they, they, like they you're like, take the fork to your hand yep. and said, walk forward. We've all been there, you know? <laughs> we've all had some moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know, okay. it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, <laughs> so she runs home and tells him, and then the angel appears. As I mentioned, uh, this he stands up in the fire, and they realize that this was an angel, and that what he said is to come true. Mm -hmm. So it says at the end, verse 24 of chapter 13, it says, And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. 
And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at the times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Estel. Estel? I believe it's Eshtol. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) I'm not positive to give people an idea of where that is. We're talking basically a little west of what would be midway between Jerusalem and the Mediterranean Sea. So if you because that's where yeah. they were at the time, yeah, yeah. The children if, of Israel. If you and especially the tribe of Dan, which is the last yeah. to receive yeah. their inheritance, and they get this weird little spot next mm-hmm. to Gaza, where the Philistines are, because yeah, let's just let Dan and Benjamin do everything, all the hard stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> which also, well, I won't, that's a whole other yeah. tangent, but there is something to be said about people who are righteous. It's the whole Job idea, right? People who are righteous going through the fire mm-hmm. to be the ones made the most. Yeah righteous out of it um is it better to endure peace or hardships for well, whatever yeah, yeah. yeah um but anyway so you have samson who's growing up in this area under the command of the philistines at the beginning of life everything's going great he's following after the rules his parents taught him all of the rules are the nazarites which means for things coming up he should know better mm-hmm. for things yep. that happened to him and i think this is also valuable in the context of the new testament because Samson's livelihood, him growing up, is going to be very similar to Christ. He's going to learn, he's going to mm. learn the teachings, he's going to be brought up in the faith, knowing that he's got a destiny, mm-hmm. and then one day, Samson's going to screw up. Samson's mm-hmm. going to do a whole lot of things wrong. Jesus never does. It's an so we see, I, I, this is one of those few times, like there's a few occasions in the Old Testament where you see this, where there's like, it's not necessarily you got to look at it and be like, ah, this is a direct parallel. Mm-hmm. But you start to see these ways in which figures who have been introduced to the Bible over the, the many, many years, we're talking about you know, 2,000 years of events that are covered in this book up until the birth of Christ. Mm-hmm. You see these little episodes where you get, you know, somebody who is doing, is given this position of savior, maybe not Messiah necessarily, but they are sent to do the right thing for the people. Mm-hmm. And they're taught what to do, and then at some point they break. Which I do think makes this this fact that we get Jesus, who manages to do everything right. I think it's part of what makes him such a special character in Christian theology. And not, I mean, obviously I'm using character in the, the sense that it's a book. But sure. a figure who is, you know, the, the final fulfillment of all of these many times that God offered a savior mm-hmm. and that savior's free will got in the way because they, they felt to lust, they felt to envy, they felt to greed, something like that. What we see with Saul and we see with David and Solomon and Samson and all of these different characters who just couldn't quite make it mm-hmm. to their potential. Well, yeah. I think it's, yeah. there, there's a, a little interesting tidbit there. First of all, a little like, you know, Easter egg of like, you know, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Uh, but secondly, in the sense of, I kind of like the idea that there have been these savior, you know, figures that have mm-hmm. occurred that were humans, but it took being the son of God and, you know, being holy in that way to be able to be the one that was different, that could mm-hmm. go the distance per se. And imagine being a Jew in the first century and you, you got all of these stories that every time a savior has come, it's, it's ended up not going. They've fallen. Yeah, they've yeah. fallen every single time. The one... <laughs> how are you going to look at this one who has managed to make it all the way up to being crucified mm-hmm. and still forgave the murderer on the cross next to him? The murderer or thief? Thief. Thief. The thief on the cross next to him. Like, not a single wrongdoing in his entire life. That's a pretty good sign that who you're looking at is the Messiah. This is not yeah. just another yeah. time that God chose a man and well, the man failed. Well, ultimately, that was that was what was you know said all the way back in the garden, right? Mm-hmm. That man man has committed sin. Man is no longer perfect. So, therefore, to alleviate that sin from imperfection, it would be perfection that does it. It would be God Himself come to Earth as a man. Exactly. To, yeah, yeah. That's Jesus. That's all other thing. Mm-hmm. I can't get talking about that. I'll get stuck on it. So anyway, back to <laughs> Samson. <Yeah. laughs> so after that, everything's going fine until in Judges chapter fourteen when it says. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Pause. Immediate issues. (laughs) (laughs) So he is a a child of Israel who is supposed to be full Nazarene, following the laws, everything like that. We've already talked about the difference between Israel and Philistine at the time, right? So going down to, to Timnath, which is a city, and seeing 
a woman who is a Philistine, and then it's going to be romantic. Not good, initially, right? Uh, for several reasons. It says in verse 2, And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Again, circumcision, we've talked yeah. about that. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. They know at this point. Uh, if you haven't, I'm sorry. Just <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know, there's like two groups of ancient people who practice circumcision. One is the Jews, the other is... Another group, oddly enough, from Egypt, but from, like, the western side of Egypt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a very weird thing. Basically, it was a sign of cleanliness, part of the Nazarite law, what have you. To say the uncircumcised is to say the people who don't follow after God, basically. Yeah. So it says, why go uh, to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. So basically, his parents are telling him that he should find someone after God, since he's, you know, the judge and all. Uh, he's held to a higher account than most other people, and uh, he doesn't care. He says, she pleases me, so yeah. go get her. And also, I mean, he's like 17. I mean, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's a kid, not thinking straight, sure. Um, and it says, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at the time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. So here it's saying that, even though Samson's not doing it for the right reasons, like several other times in the Bible, God can use bad situations for the good, mm -hmm. right? He can use anything, regardless of if someone has the best means of going about something or not. This is something that gets talked about in the Bible a lot, like, uh, oh, well, if Jesus was always meant to be crucified, does that mean the people that crucified him were good? Is that what that means? No, it means that a good thing came out of man's wickedness, out yeah. of their desire to do something. They'll also use man's weaknesses to achieve his own goals. I mean, oh, if, we yeah, look, yeah. if we look at Pharaoh, Pharaoh's weakness is wrath and Exodus. He's yeah. And every single time God does something, he's well aware that Pharaoh is going to go, well, no, I'm still yeah. not letting you leave. Yeah. yeah. Which is everybody, you see the, you know, the terminology, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. One, mm -hmm. one interpretation of that that I've seen that I thought was intriguing is that uh, textually, it's not saying that God went in to Pharaoh's soul and turned his heart to stone. Mm -hmm. It's that Pharaoh's heart was hardened against God. Yeah. That Pharaoh was, you know, irritated, that he was annoyed, and that he was even more digging in his heels out of stubbornness. Mm -hmm. So you see these op these moments where, in this case, God needs Samson to fall in love with a Philistine. Mm -hmm. Samson's or, a... Or know, even <laughs> if he doesn't need... Samson is choosing to fall in love with the Philistine, yeah. so God's like, okay, I can make this work. Like, yeah. it's, it's a dumb idea, but... <laughs> We can spin this, basically. Yeah. So, anyway, it says that, uh, Then went Samson down, and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and beheld, and behold, a young lion roared against him. Now, this is the first instance we have of Samson's strength. See, up until this point, we've had nothing about strength. We just had, he will be a judge, he will deliver the children of Israel, just make sure he follows all the Nazarite mm -hmm. laws. And then it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing... I should clarify, kid means... Yes, goat. A goat. It doesn't mean the Young way goat. he would rip a child. <laughs> it doesn't mean he just tear a child in half. It means the way that, like, a, a small goat, you mm -hmm. could, like, break its neck to kill, to eat, or yeah. something. He did that to a lion. Mm -hmm. Samson did. That's how powerful he became in this moment. Now, what's interesting here, a lot of people just see Samson as a strong figure and equate that he just had super strength all no, the time. No, this is, this is specifically, this, the spirit of the Lord is important here. Yes, because it, it implies that it's not like Samson has, he's just super strong. Mm -hmm. It's that in moments where he needs it, a, the spirit of the Lord comes yeah, upon him. He can call upon that strength. And he's able to become that strong. Not that he's walking around like the Hulk, just mm -hmm. lifting stuff to show off for fun. Because he's God's chosen man, God gives him the capability he needs. A lion's about to kill him. He is given the strength to defeat the lion. Like that. So it says that uh, he rent the lion uh, as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time, he returned to take her. So he's walking back through that same area that he had just killed the lion. And it says, and he, he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took there, thereof in his hand 
and went, you know, and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat, but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. So it's interesting that his parents are completely unaware well, all he did was he brought honey back. Yeah. He's like, oh, you want honey? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not saying, like, they should, have ca they should have caught on. Like, it's just, it's an interesting aspect of the story that his parents do not know. See, what I think it is, uh, my interpretation of this has always been, remember, he's supposed to follow the Nazarite laws. Yeah. One of the Nazarite laws is, as I mentioned earlier, you never eat of something dead. Yeah. Like, if something's dead, don't touch it, right? Again, even if you're not getting sick in that particular instance, you're, it's, it's a rule. Don't follow yeah. it. Uh, I mean, sorry, follow it. Don't do it. So there's a dead lion with honey inside of it. And it's like, oh, and it, the way I see that Samson judged this in his mind, and as we're going to see from his character later in the story, is he's like, oh, well, it's not. I'm not really eating of something dead. Right? He's eating it's of just, something that was in something Yeah, dead. it's just inside of the dead thing. On a technicality, I can get away with this, right? So that's kind of like, well, maybe he figured maybe he did it to himself, but then he brings it home and feeds it to his parents. Mm -hmm. So now his conviction... His idea of what is okay, he's like, mom and dad don't need to know. He yep. handed it out to them. Now, this isn't, obviously, his mom and dad didn't know. It's not like they'd be judged for it. But now, Samson's so self-confident that he's like, my parents can't be judged on the same merit as well. It's already a cockiness in him that we see expounded on later. I think that the reason that's mentioned there is we're already seeing he's kind of like, nah, I don't, the rules are rules, but I don't really need them that much. Uh, and that, that's going to get worse and worse as the story goes on. Do you know what the FDA considers honey meat? Honey meat? Honey is considered meat by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. You. Yeah. Disgusting. Anyway. How? I don't know. By that merit, milk would be meat. Because... Milk is dairy. Okay. It's because um, there's no category for honey. That's not the point. I just thought it was an interesting little tidbit. It, it is, but that's... Hold but, on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> honey just feels like essentially the equivalent of like a jam. But just like yeah, yeah, naturally, yeah. But I am it's, not okay, a regulator. Hold, hold on. We're talking now. Stay out of this. <laughs> <laughs> if a honey is a byproduct of animals, yes. right? That's why I use the milk analogy. Like milk comes from cows, but it's not meat. But sure, yeah. dairy, right? What's another thing that comes out of an animal that's eaten that isn't a dairy? That isn't meat, obviously. Like, can't think of anything that's eggs. eaten. Eggs. Eggs. Yeah. Which I believe are technically classified as meat. Eggs are a meat? I mean, they turn into meat if they're fertilized. Okay, but when you fry an egg, it's not... I feel like egg is, is its own thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's really I, just... I feel like we just need a miscellaneous category for foods. Um, I, I well, did honey... not mean to sidetrack us well, this hun much. Honey is just basically sugar. Like, it's, it's a, yeah. a healthier form of sugar naturally made by bees as a... It's not even a byproduct, is it? No, it's purposeful. Yeah. They manufacture it. Which is... Weird. Hilarious that we just, like, steal their hard... <laughs> their hard-earned fine. labor. <laughs> They're fine. Are you looking it up right now? Yes. He is, yeah. Are you looking at what eggs are considered? Yes. Okay. I can't find... How does the USDA classify eggs to find... In terms of the appearance... And, I mean, no, not how they rate eggs. I want to know what eggs are under. I mean, they're definitely a protein... Yeah. I mean, does, hold on. What does the FDA... I think honey does have protein in it. Classify... What category is an egg? <laughs> I think you would just look up, does the FDA... Poultry get... products? Okay, hold on. Now, if that if that's how we're doing stuff, then honey could be a bee product. <laughs> Byproduct, bee product. Shut up. <laughs> Scientifically speaking, honey is a type of carbohydrate, mainly mainly consisting of monosaccharides, fructose, and glucose. Yeah, glucose. So yeah, it's like yeah. it's almost entirely sugar. Honey and raw meat. It's really a conversation. Yeah, but I told you. But why is it I'm meat? shutting the door? <laughs> it's meat because the government is stupid. Eggs are often found in the dairy case. No. If you went and asked any given person what honey is, they would probably say honey. Or if sugar? you asked any given person if it's a meat, they would say no. The only re only the government could possibly call honey a meat. Can we please Rel move on? Related question: Is an egg a fruit or a vegetable? What? All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's too far. Okay. Sorry, I've, I've realized. It's a okay, so after anyway, seeing that related question, yes, I realized any, what ca ca like caliber. I'm anyway, talking. we're. 
Samson, this is a, we're beginning to see a pattern here of yeah, Samson yeah, yeah, going yeah, yeah. against so the rules. Samson starts, <laughs> he's playing hooky with the rules that he's, he's supposed getting a chip to. on his shoulder. Fast and loose. He's like the high school quarterback that, you know, won the championship now after the Lion. And yep. he's like, I can do yep. no wrong. I, kill, I, I, I killed the Lion. I don't need to, look at what I did. Why do I need to follow the stupid rules or whatever? I don't right? need to marry somebody of my own. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, those, those rules are good for yeah. everyone else. Yeah. But not me. I can kill a Lion. It's an extraordinary man. I'm just going to play football for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someone got really mad at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. So after he does that, he gives them uh, the honey. It says, so his father went down unto the woman and Samson made there a feast for, for so used the young men to do. Uh, Weird wording. Basically, it's saying that they, when you would get married, the, the groom would throw a feast for his groom's when, when So the he goes to the woman, says, I want to marry you. They get married. So there's a big feast, thrown, yeah. right? For, it's like a bachelor's party or an yes. engagement party. Yeah, 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 yeah. But a, wed a wedding party, closest yeah. thing to a reception, yeah. right? So uh, obviously, bounds of marriage were different than post testament. I'm, but I'm know. not positive if it was this early, but I I do know that betrothal, at least by the time of Joseph and Mary, mm -hmm. uh, Jewish betrothal was that betrothal was the same level of commitment as a marriage. Mm -hmm. but what made it, you did not consummate until after the marriage. So technically two people who were betrothed were supposed to be uh, loyal to each other. They were not supposed to accept other offers. They were not supposed to date. They were supposed to be, we are getting married. It's like being engaged. It's like an yeah. engagement. Yeah. It's, yeah, like an engagement, but without any of the modern sort of like, ah, I could break it if I needed to. It's kind of like it's, a promise it's and a commitment. Stone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the marriage is when it's consummated. Is there yeah. any no. religious... Like over were undertones with the betrothal as opposed to the like the marriage sacrament type of thing. I mean, the word betrothal is very like non-religious setup and stuff, but it was set up in the Old Testament that uh, like if a godly man finds a godly woman to take her as your mm -hmm. wife. But also in the Old Testament, it was told that righteous men were to have several wives because you want to make as many sons and daughters yeah. to follow and you know build up build up your people, so when? to speak. It's when in the, that change the New Testament. Okay. It's in the New Testament, specifically with like Paul and the teachings gotcha. and stuff, that it's like, uh, as a matter of fact, slight side tangent, very beautiful picture of marriage is when Christ says like his greatest gift to us on earth, or one of his greatest gifts is that of marriage, mm -hmm. that you have a portion of the love that I have for you, you can find that in each other, mm -hmm. which is a very beautiful, the way that Christ tells husbands to treat their wives is he says, husbands, love your wives as I have loved the church and gave my life for it. Uh, well, Paul says it, so he says, love your wives as Christ loved the church yeah. and gave his life for it. Um, but that that's such a that's such a huge, like you will never live, like that is something to always strive for, but an impossible thing to ever fully achieve, right? Yeah, like, most people aren't going to have to die to save their wife. Exactly, yeah. And like, <laughs> love her as much as I loved you. That's coming from the one who died on a cross for okay. us, right? Yep. Like, so... That it is then that it goes from these are like good people, people you know, and there and there is love in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. Ruth and Boaz, David and Bathsheba, even if it came through wrong means, there is yeah. romance scene, but it's in the New Testament when it's one and one are now made one mm -hmm. together, uh, and love her as much as I love you, like yeah. that. That's when the the switch happens. There's, a, there's yeah. a whole new level of devotion that's essentially you know bestowed upon the. Sacrament, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. There, it, it, it goes from, like, something to follow after, you know, like, a good thing to follow, to, like, as a man, this is the most important thing you're going to do. Yeah. Basically. Like, and and well, I say yeah. this, I, I'm saying as a man, because I only know marriage from a man's perspective. Yeah. There's also stuff of the woman to be loving and all that. But as a man, I think of that all the time, of Christ being like, as much as I love you, treat her that way. The Old Testament very much looks at marriage. I, I mean, yes, there's, as you said, there's love, but it's a lot more utilitarian, a lot yeah, more yeah. you're doing Because it was at a utilitarian yeah. time. Well, yeah, you needed different. a lot of, you needed the population <laughs> needed to grow, to, and you, you needed, needed to be strong, people, yeah, and you know, yeah. you needed, there were a lot. As established, they're in a desert right and, now. And if you yeah. think about it, like, look at look at the time period. If your husband dies in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. you're you're in trouble. Like, yeah, that's true. There is not yeah. there is not a government there that, to find something for you. There's to actually to take care of you. There's actually a practice, <laughs> if I remember, in Leviticus. Yes, the brother is supposed the brother, to marry. that if your so if your brother dies, you're to marry his wife, mm -hmm. because it was seen again. And if your brother the, dies childless, you're supposed to give him a son by proxy. 
Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like, again, again, thinking of marriage in modern context, it's so strange yeah. and weird. And objectively, yes, it is strange and weird <laughs> from everything we know. But given a time where men would have many wives and, like, it was more of, like, mm. a large family unit to keep safe and all that, it, different times, obviously, yeah. like, different way it's set up. Um, but, yeah, it's like New Testament when the switch between the two is. Um, so, anyway, so they have this big feast. It says, and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. Talking about to the groomsmen, basically, the big feast. And Sansom said unto them, now these are these companions are men of um, the Philistines, yes. if I, I believe. So this all is, of them. All of them, yeah. All these 30 men were essentially brought as groomsmen from her people, right? From the Philistines, right? So they're at this feast, and Samson, already showing his proclivity for being a jerk, it says, and Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If ye can certainly declare it me, if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty changes of garment. But if ye cannot declare it me, then shall ye give me thirty sheets and thirty changes of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. So Thirty men gathered together. He's like, I'll get clothes for all of you, but if I'm wrong, each of you have to give me clothes and garments. Which again, super expensive, hard to come by at this time period. Also, not a bad plan. If, if I like, mean, it's it's a jerk plan, but yeah, but if, not, I mean, not if a, you need clothes, if you need clothes, not a bad plan. Um, so he says, all right, let's hear the riddle. And he said, and he said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. That's the riddle. Yep. So what do you, what do you think the riddle is about? Oh, it's, it's about him having eaten the honey from the lion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a personal story only he knows. <laughs> Out of the eater came its meat. Came Even the Bible meat. defines honey as meat. No. No, no, no. Out Maybe of the that's eater, why the USDA considers it meat. No, no, no. Out of the eater came forth meat, yeah. right? So the lion has meat, and oh. it, it's it's meat. Oh, and okay. It says, out of the strong came forth sweetness. Oh, so the fermentation of the lions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see, I see. All yeah, right. yeah, I don't think... I don't, it was the strong that was throwing me off. Don't give the FDA that much credit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, his, his, the answer to the riddle is a personal anecdote no one else can know. It's ridiculous, right? It says, and they could not in three days expound the riddle. Duh. <laughs> so... It says, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. <laughs> have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? So the men come to his wife and they're like, all right, we're, we're getting duped by your husband effectively. Mm -hmm. If you can't find out what the answer to that riddle he gave us is, we will burn you and your father. Yeah. Uh, it's a great, great, great group they're, of guys. They're basically like, did yeah. you really invite us here just to, like, rob us? Yeah, yeah. They get Because if you did... They get the idea of, like, oh, we come to a wedding, and now there's a riddle that can't be solved, and now we gotta give, oh, we gotta give the newlyweds 30, you know, sheets of garments or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, they tell her that. It says, and Samson's wife wept before him and said, thou dis... <laughs> Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it to thee? And she wept before him the seven days, while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. So basically, over the course of the whole feast, she continues to say, oh, you hate me, why won't you mm -hmm. tell me? You have this riddle, but I don't get to know it. And he's like, I haven't even told my mom or dad, why would I tell it to you? And she just keeps wearing him down until eventually he goes, fine. And he tells her, she tells the children, and then they come to him. And says, and the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? So they, they yeah. know the answer to the riddle. And he said unto them, Brace yourselves. And he said unto them, If ye had not plowed my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. <laughs> I know it can't possibly... It doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It can't it doesn't possibly that. translate... To the, it's yeah, H-E-I-F-E-R. Yeah, I, I, no, I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying, like, the, the modern connotation of what that would mean I know, is not I know. the same thing. It's very... To be clear. Well, yeah, to yeah. be to, clear. To which word, though? 
Do I need to explain this to you? <laughs> no, no, no. I get no, the the part that it doesn't correlate to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like plow and heifer in modern day context. Uh, yes, exactly. Know, he's say, he's saying if you had not pushed her, this yeah. woman I don't really care about. If you're not pushed her so hard, it wouldn't yeah. have happened. Basically, if you hadn't uh, like abused my wife. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, but I, that's probably what it is. Because you're not supposed to use a, a heifer to plow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So. I mean, like, but by today's standards, very yeah, convenient <laughs> phrasing, of course, yeah, yeah. But I was wondering if he was intentionally referring to his wife as a cow. No! I mean, maybe. Because, like, that would be an interesting element of the story of, like, how much does he really I don't think he really life. cared about I her. have questions for Jesus when I die. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, which means there again his strength mm -hmm. comes back. And he went down to Ashkelon. That is 30 miles, by the way. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he's, I'm so mad. <laughs> that, is like, 30 miles. that is like you and I being pissed about something and going to Philly solely to kill 30 people. Yeah, yeah. so he, he goes on this walk and it says he goes down to Ashkelon and slew 30 men of them, of the Philistines. Yeah. And took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house yeah. So, he just went, they're like, you owe us 30 clothes, and he goes, okay, goes to their city, kills 30 men, takes their clothes, and goes, here you go. <laughs> Which, okay. See how wrath is a sin? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, this is an example. Yeah, so we're seeing a further example of, like, Samson's spite, right, mm -hmm. of his anger. And it's like, sure, they were Philistines, they were wicked and stuff, but this situation would not have needed to happen yep. in the way it did had he not yeah. been so clever by get, trying to get him a joke. Like, I know a quick way I can trick some people. Yeah. He's using, he's using the wisdom and the situation God's given him for good. Yeah. Like, so far what we saw is God gave him the strength to kill a lion, and the only two things he's done with that information is eat out of a dead carcass mm -hmm. and try to game it to get yep. clothes from people. Yeah, and yeah. when you when you look at what he's doing here, that, as much as the seven deadly sins are kind of a Catholic like, mm -hmm. they they would be like, here are the seven deadly sins, and then here's seven more deadly sins, and then here's seven more deadly. Yeah, because that's but, how the verses are read when you find them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what you what you're seeing here is very much you can see him kind of like checking off a list. He's we've got lust, we've got <laughs> greed, we've got wrath, yeah. we've got envy. Like, yeah, yeah he's, he's checking them <laughs> off. Yeah, really. It, intriguing level of uh you know character display yeah. from a judge mm -hmm. remember that just because a biblical character is the protagonist of the story does not mean they're perfect yeah mm -hmm. yeah actually He's, none of them are yeah, except for christ yeah, yeah i mean yeah. it's it, like th this is not aragorn in lord of the rings this sure is, sure like, <laughs> but it's there's a difference between you know oh he made a little mistake and like okay this guy's like he, he's not even, like, stumbling down the hill. He took a swan dive off the cliff. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, so I'm going to go kill 30 people. Yeah. Which, I mean, again, Philistines, whatever, but still, like, he still... He, still, he put himself yeah. in a situation where he needed to kill 30 people, right? Yeah. That's something else we see. Samson's given a lot of agency to do stuff, and the spirit of the Lord still comes upon him. Mm -hmm. Because... He still needs to be alive, he still needs to be safe, but he keeps putting himself in dangerous situations where God has to give him an out, basically. Yeah. Uh, so plot anyway, armor. What? It's plot armor. It's plot armor, basically, yeah. And it says in verse 20, But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. So, this happens, he goes kills 30 mm -hmm. people, gives them back. Um, her family, his wife's family, is like, Oh, well that's... I don't know about that. Yep. So... <laughs> He, uh, so they're like, all right, and they just give her off to someone else, which as you yeah. had just mentioned, big no-no in the yeah. bonds of marriage, betrothment, yeah. and, and all that. It does, I mean, first of all, it's a Philistine marriage, but Sure, like, sure, they're already yeah. playing it loose anyway. It, it does you know? depend, I mean, if they have not yet, it, did they consummate the night of the wedding, or are they consummating the night of the seven feasts? Yeah, it like, could have not have been married. Yeah, yeah, so. But there's also a part in this story where he goes to see a prostitute. Yeah. It, that's so, also like, not great. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> both sides don't really care. Bit of a spoiler for what's about yeah, to happen, but it's, anyway, it's all. So it says, but it came uh, just just really quickly. I I do read it that that little section about uh, the Philistines as some of them actually being his friends that he killed. 
No, the the Philistines oh oh that's that's a good point yeah, yeah where it says uh, yeah I've seen a few different translations his one, wife was given to one who yeah. was his friend yeah, yeah, yeah. It, or his best man even in the New King James because it's like trying to make it nice and modern for sure, you sure sure yeah <laughs> yeah but don't that's, worry here's what yeah. you could mean yeah, yeah. I I just wanted to make sure like I don't think he was going to this wedding and being like wow everyone that, here hates me that is a good point it's not really just the idea that uh samson like just saw a pretty woman yeah. it's like i don't care that she's philistine like it's likely he lived with the yeah, guys they lived like, amongst he, the philistines he hung out with them he he ate with them he fought with them you know they like they they were his friends even though they he wasn't supposed to be doing that because he was called to something better that there's probably a long history of him not being with the crowd he's supposed to. And especially in the in Dan's region, when you look at like where this is along the coastline, this is a this is a trade route. Yeah. He's yeah. he's probably run into a lot more than just Philistines. Yeah. So this guy yeah. is he's living in a cultural hub. It's not yeah. shocking that he's gonna have positive relationships. You know, that makes the the ending of the story more tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so chapter fifteen begins with Samson finding this out. It says, But it came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. Um, a goat, kid, again. A goat. It, it would be funny, the visual of Samson, like, this is your son, but no. Yeah. <laughs> I like how Samson like the has the child. Yeah, yeah, man, the man shows up to the woman. <laughs> this is your, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> says, uh, he goes to visit his wife with a kid, which is a gift, basically. I bring you a goat or whatever. Because as far as Samson knows, he's still married. Right? He's like, oh, I killed 30 Philistines, handed this off. Now yeah. time to go see my wife. But as the last verse said, they're already like, oh, well, he's not marrying you? All right, this this guy, this is your wife yeah. now, like, passes him off. It's so. not made entirely clear how much time has passed. Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, I mean, like, maybe a few days, maybe a week. Who knows, right? After he got done killing 30 people and handing over yeah. the garments. Also, all of this is taking place over a very small geographic area of, like, 60 miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all within <laughs> the region of each other. And it says, and he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. Um, go into means exactly what you yeah, think yeah, it means. He's, yeah, he's yeah. going to go know her. Yeah, to know her in the biblical sense. This, which actually you mentioned, not to get too graphic for it, but you mentioned the consummation. May yeah, not that might yet. be what he's going yeah, for. Yeah, it may not have happened yet. They may never have been married in the, in the sense of the time. Because uh, he comes here with the gift of a kid and says, I will now go mm. into my wife. And says, but her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hast utterly hated her. Uh, therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Now, the part about hating her is valid. Because imagine if you were at a wedding with a woman, and then you get into a fight, and you go out and kill 30 people she knows, and come back, and you're like, Where, where's my wife? <laughs> <laughs> and the dad's like, oh, I thought, what? it's still on? What? Like, Make sure you didn't want to go on a rampage. Yeah, oh, going. sorry. I didn't want my daughter to stick around. Yeah. Um, so as I thought that utterly hate her, therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Literally goes, okay, yeah, I mean, I gave her to your best friend, but... But you can have her little sister. She's yeah. hotter. That also gives you an idea yeah. of the Philistines' yeah. thought to this stuff at the time. There's a lot of stories of Philistines uh. taking, like, child brides, effectively, and stuff. So it's like, oh, but there's a younger daughter. You can have that one if you want. Um, She's newer. Yeah, and he says, take her, I pray thee, instead of her. Uh. Yeah. It says, and Samson said concerning them, now shall... We're going to need to close that. Yeah, yeah, we're going to close that. <laughs> My dog is upset at something. Anyway. It says, and Samson said concerning them, now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. Because now he's like, all right, I was holding back before, but now that, you know, my wife has gone to this other guy, possibly out of, you know, a series of events that I set up, uh, I'm now blameless. It says, and Samson went and caught, <laughs> Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands, firebrands effectively, torch, torch like a torch, took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. So he takes 300 foxes, so 150 pairs of them. And ties a torch to their tails. Ties a torch in the middle of them, so both of the foxes are trying to run away from the torch, right? Um, it says put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines. And burn up both the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. It oh. drives me nuts that the KJV uses the word corn, but that's that's a specific. He, he means he means green. Are you better? 
Yes. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna fo- hyper fixate on the type of. We're gonna like, fixate on the crop. Well, was, like, there's gonna be some person who's an atheist with who's gonna be like, "Didn't you know that they discovered corn in the Americas?" Like, valid. I'm more concerned about like the fact that you know Jeffrey Dahmer got his ideas from this passage apparently with the foxes, because <laughs> like, good lord, <laughs> that's pretty devilish to think of, right? Like, oh, yeah. the foxes will run. They'll be so scared they'll <laughs> run through all the corn. No, they can't. Wait. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna they're gonna like try and but they're going crab walking yeah, sideways because yeah. they can't go the yeah, right so way. That, that it's kind of be, a confusing passage when you think about that. That had to be a sight to see. Yeah. Ima- imagine being the guy like guarding the vineyard and you're like, what the It's <laughs> also just an extraordinary number of foxes to corral at once. Yeah, well I mean the, this is the guy who ripped a line yeah, fair. up. Like I'm sure you could uh, the spirit of the Lord, because he's like, Oh sorry God, I'm being attacked by foxes. It'd be yeah. really cool if I could run super fast right now or whatever could, like this is the guy who keeps pushing his luck with could, god could it mean does it say it took that he took two foxes tail to tail or does it say he took the foxes tail to tail it says he took two it says okay, uh, yeah. samson caught 300 and turned tail to tail and put a fireman in the midst between two tails gotcha so yeah no it, it was so not I was like i was like is it possibly to put a circle <laughs> it, like it no not i 300 no <laughs> the way he's not afraid <laughs> Well, the way you described it at first, I thought he lined all three hundred up in a row and tied them all together. I mean, maybe that that would that could be between two ten with the circle. <laughs> Biblically accurate fox. I'm just trying to think of a way that this makes sense. Like, imagine the dude guarding the. <laughs> and there's 150 torches and a 300 fox ball like coming over the hills. <laughs> Mother. <Bowling. laughs> And it's all it's all on fire. All of his like grain is just like burning. <laughs> we broke him. We broke him. Just the thought of like how do you there's no precedent for that. <laughs> like how do you combat that? Man is like rifling through his scrolls looking for the procedure. <laughs> and just, be an probably not even scrolls yet, he's probably throwing clay tablets all over the place. <laughs> There's, there's rocks flying out of the dark tower. The original copy of the Iliad is in there somewhere. <laughs> and, and he's, by chance, he's like having a panic attack. All of the shattered tablets around him. He looks on the hill and he sees the one man who could deal with it. And he is in Stitch's lap. <laughs> Where is Dagon now? <laughs> Where's your god now? Oh my gosh. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even look like? Somebody animate this, please. Yeah. We, we, we need... It's like a Ferris wheel. <laughs> like something. We need a History, stan- history Channel style animation. <laughs> okay. Alright, I'm, I'm better now. So oh. yeah, he does that, right? Yeah. And as you can imagine, the Philistines are unhappy <laughs> about, about this. Like, that was a little rude. It says, then the Philistines said, who hath done this? And they <laughs> said, By reading the book! <laughs> because after all of that, just like the guy from the next shift comes up and it's like, hey yo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Who has done that? <laughs> A shattered library on I the can, ground. I can just imagine like the distraught look on his face. <laughs> Who has done this? <laughs> uh, it's the farmer who planted all the crops. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, the idea of this, of this just like dirt farmer. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't keep up with the news. You don't know who Samson is. You don't know any Philistine beef. You just go out to look at your vineyard one day. And there's 300 <laughs> boxes on fire. A tax collector shows up a all, few months later all, asking where your money all, is. All you can say is, who has done this? Like, what did I do? What the heck? You do have to feel bad for, like, that one specific I feel, b- I feel bad for that yeah. one guy, yeah. Well, and the other 30. I was just going to say, he, just, he, he, he had oh. just put down his morning tablet and coffee after hearing about 30 guys who got killed for their clothes. And he's like, man, the city's really, like, just going down. Egypt's doing well this quarter. Come <laughs> 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 on. Oh. All right, who has done this? 
<laughs> right. Who? Oh. Okay. Right, anyway. so who hath done this? Yeah. Who hath done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. You know, I feel like they were warned that that might happen. I mean, yeah, this is an, exa this is an example. Like, sure, it's, it's the evil of the Philistines who killed mm -hmm. the woman, right? But this series of events started because Samson's like, I'm, I'll figure out a riddle that yeah. will get them. And then he kills 30 people and all this. Like, sure, everyone, no one was doing good there, but the reason that his wife and her father died was because Samson kept yeah. doing this stuff. So, uh, even if he didn't kill her per se, it was that series of events that led to it. And it says, um, and they burnt her and her father with fire. And Samson said unto them, though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. So now Samson's saying here, I'm going to take vengeance for this death, then after that I'll quit. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm done with this. I'm done with this fire and turmoil, done with this war. This is my last one. So it says, Recall there are four John Wick movies. <laughs> and then it says, and, he's, <laughs> and after that I'll cease. <laughs> and he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. And he went down and dwelt in the top of the rock Tam. Then the Philistines went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. So anyway, this happens. Samson kills a thousand men. Which, of course, brings the ire of the Philistine, Philistines even more. So, uh, now it says that um, Samson goes back with his people, the people of Judah, or the, the, the people yeah. of Israel. And then, while he's with them, it says the Philistines come and set up camp right next to them. Mm -hmm. And it says, which is normally a bad thing. If you're under control of a nation, and like your people all of a sudden, their army show up and camp out next to you, someone's messed up, right? <laughs> Why else would they be here? That's one way to put it. And they're there, well, they're there to get Samson, who just murdered a thousand of their men, yeah. right? And it says, And the Philistines went up and pitched, and the men of Judah said, Why are ye come up against us? Asking the Philistines. And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he hath done to us. Mm -hmm. Then three thousand men of Judah... Oh yeah, Samson's chilling in the cave right now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, the top of the mountain, the top of Etam. Yeah. So, like, Samson's upset. He did, like, for... I don't think he loved his wife, but... He's, he did realize, with that phrase where he's like, I will avenge and then I'll cease, he's, I think he's realized a lot of this is his doing, so he's kind of like mourning to himself right yeah. now. So 3,000 men go to where they know Samson is. The 3,000 men of Judah went to the top of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, Knowest thou not that the Philistines are rulers over us? What is this that thou hast done unto us? And he said unto them, As they did unto me, so have I done unto them. We also see here a bit more despi like despisal coming out of mm -hmm. him. Like, sure, the Philistines, bad people, whatever. Yeah, they killed his wife and all that. But he murdered a thousand people in response to that. And now when they're like, this is going to cause problems for us, he goes, I'm getting an eye for an eye. I'm just getting even. He still has this cocky attitude of what I need to get done will get done. And I have God as like a, a safety card, basically, to get me out of that situation. It says, and they said unto him, we are come down to bind thee, that we may deliver thee into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, Swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. So the Philistines won captured, and Judah, the people of Judah say, Well, we're here to deliver you to them, right? Because they're going to they're gonna start killing us if this doesn't happen. And Samson says, Okay, just promise you're not going to kill me yourselves. And it says, They swear, uh, and they speak unto him, saying, No, but we will bind thee fast and deliver thee into their hand, but surely we will not kill thee. And they bound him with two new cords and brought him up from the rock. And when he came to Lehi, the place where the Philistines were camping, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Again, he's in a situation. He's bound up now in front of them, and the Philistines are about to kill him. And it says, uh, And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. So, basically turned to ash. Yeah, basically had the power to disintegrate the, the stuff that uh, was tying him up. And it says, And he found a new jawbone of an ass, so the jawbone of a donkey, mm -hmm. and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. So again, he's given this power. He's there in front of the camp of all of the Philistines, and with the jawbone of a donkey kills a thousand more men. There is a huge bloodshed that has happened at this point. Philistines really ain't good at combat. Well, I mean, 
it's the Samson's effectively fighting with the power of an That's angel. True. Yeah, good point. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I don't think the issue is they didn't duck and roll right <laughs> yeah. during the fight. They just did not have the movement. Yeah, that's yeah. what this was. Yeah, they couldn't two step effectively. Yeah, Stamps and an aim assist. You, okay. You, you, you just put a thousand infantrymen against Superman. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what happened. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So it says then, after this has happened, Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. Heaps upon heaps too. That gives you a visual of how, think about how bloody that field was, right? A thousand bodies, like, murdered that way. It says, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand, and called that place Ramathali, Ramathali, what have you. And he was <laughs> Uh, Ramothly High. Ramoth, what he said. So he calls, he calls this place that after the death. It says, And he was sore thirst, and called on the Lord, and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die of thirst, and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised. So already we have a bit of, there's already cockiness yep. brewing up again. He just got done killing a thousand men with the power of God, and then he's like, Oh what, now I'm going to die of thirst? You're really going to let this happen, God? Because he... He's still not getting the point of yeah. where this comes from. It says, But God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore, he called the name thereof, and, and a core, whatever, which is in Lehi to this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. So, mm -hmm. we have a whole series of events that happened because he messed up. He wanted to be clever with a riddle. That the wife got the riddle out of him. Uh, he then kills thirty men out of upsetness, right? So then, because of that, yeah, uh, in a tantrum. Then after that, his wife's given to another man. He kills a thousand. Then after that, the whole uh, they kill. Uh, after they kill his wife and the father, he kills a thousand. Then he goes up to the rock, and then the children of Judah come, and he gets delivered back in their hands, and he kills a thousand more. There are 2,030 people who have died directly because he wanted to be clever at, at a game, basically, to get some stuff out of it. 2,032 if you kill yeah. the, the, the wife and father. Yeah, all that has been done because of his series of events. So, But it says after this, he judged Joseph's world 20 years, so we can assume, at least for a while, that he did better, right? That he... he acted more uprightly. The, a judge of Israel is someone who is, you know, he's looking over the people, he's taking care of things that he's taken care of. Ideally, everything was going right during this time. Until we pick up a chapter 16, and immediately <laughs> we see the kind of behavior. I don't know if he was doing this behavior during the time mentioned, the 20 years, or if this was like a first slip up for him. We don't know. But we see that whatever effect that that event did have on him, everything that just happened, it didn't last forever. Um, I also think, uh, some people have the question, they look at characters like Samson, and they're like, why would God pick Samson to be the judge, right? And I think they're looking at it wrong. It's That's a similar question to why would God pick Saul to be king. Mm -hmm. It's that there's an individual who at one point is in the perfect situation yep. to be right, right? He has righteous parents. Uh, he was born to follow the Nazarite law. He had every opportunity set up for him, but then by his own free will, he turns astray. It's not like God picked Samson because, haha, this guy's going to mess up. He picked Samson and then allowed Samson to make his own decisions, and much like Saul, he keeps making the wrong ones. Uh, and here we have another wrong decision because at the beginning of chapter 16, it says, Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there a harlot and went in unto her. Yep. So he's immediately going to the, the strange land, and hooking up with various women. Mm -hmm. So, great judge of the people of God <laughs> already. Yeah, I mean, when in Vegas, you know. When in Vegas, yeah. And it says, and it was told the, the, the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither, and they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, in the morning when it is day, we shall kill him. So the people of Gaza, which is the Philistines, are like, all right, he's here in the city right now, we're going to lock him in, and then, in the morning, when he gets out of bed, we're going to kill him. Uh, so, it says, And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, <laughs> and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. So, he wakes up in the middle of the night, and he's like, Huh, gates are locked. Now, keep in mind, gates of a city are not gates. They're yeah. like 30 foot tall 
massive wood and steel, like the kind chariots ran through, right? Uh, and he's like, yeah, we're huh. not talking about like a small town. This is like Gaza. Gaza's a, city. a huge city, right? So these yeah. are massive gates. And he goes, okay, picks them up, <laughs> bar and all, it says, and carries them on his back to a different city and then just throws them on him. <laughs> <laughs> So, but again, like, sure, God's giving him the strength, because if he would have stayed up there, they would have slain him, right? Uh, or they or they would have tried to, at least. God is giving him the strength to get out of situations, but the only reason he was in that situation is because he went to go hook up with someone, yep. right? Like, he's putting himself in bad situations, and God keeps letting him get out of them, basically. So it says, uh, And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And this is... Yes. Yeah. yeah this this is, is also, by the way, just... Like geographically, very close to yeah. Zora, where he's from. So yeah. this is yeah. this is telling you also that a considerable number of Philistines are living within what is considered Israelite land. Mm -hmm. So this is whoever this this character is that she comes from, Delilah. Mm -hmm. She is either you know consistently passing through this area or lives there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he goes to see this woman named Delilah. And it says, and the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her. Also, we can assume from this that he's been seeing her a while, yeah. like having regular appointments, so to speak. Um, it's not said if this is just a woman that he's fallen yeah. for but won't marry, or if this is uh, maybe a, a prostitute similar to the last one. Who knows? Uh, either way, this is a woman who um, he's continuing to see over and over. Yes. She's a Philistine, so the Philistine leaders find out about this relationship. And they come to her and say, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Which translates to a lot of money. Yeah, so, especially for somebody in her station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's even, life changing. Even, even if that's not her job, uh, yeah. I mean anyone, that's like uh, 1,100 pieces of silver, right? Ch chances are unwed woman at that time fraternizing with foreign men. You can go ahead and catch hot water for it. I'm not going to say anything. So. I'm not saying she no, was. No, no, I'm no, just you, saying you it's are, possible. I think that's what you're saying. So you can get canceled for that in the comment section. I'm going to say she was. Um, uh, what was this Delilah we're talking about? Um, I think she was uh, a bad person who um, was in a bad situation, <laughs> and um, we should feel bad for. Her. That's what I'm saying. So. But you say whatever you want. It's all about forgiveness. It's all about forgiveness. Yeah. I'm just saying, Samson has a past, a reputation for mm -hmm. this kind of thing. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Lay, lay it all on me. Yeah, lay say whatever it. you want. That's, you know what? that's exactly what I'm doing. You know what, chat, you decide. <laughs> oh, they will. Please do not decide. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it says, um, so basically, if you can figure out what makes him so strong, we'll give you a lot mm -hmm. of money. And we know what makes him strong. It's the fact that he, like, ideally yeah. follows a lot of the Phyllis, of the, uh, the Nazarite mm -hmm. laws, right? And it says, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy strength, thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. So she's, one night they're laying together, and she's like, Oh, tell me what makes you such a strong boy, right? <laughs> now, you can imagine whatever level of seduction you, you want. Got with such big muscles. muscles. Oh, you just such big <laughs> muscles. Where'd you get you from? Oh, how's your work? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just, she's, she's loving him up, right? And it says, um, And Samson said unto her, if they bind me with seven greens, with that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. It's likely by uh, bowstrings. Yeah, like like bowstrings, yeah. right? So like, I would take non-dried bowstrings, and if you're at me up with seven of them, I lose my strength. Which he's just making stuff up. That that's, yep. that doesn't mean anything. It says, so then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven greens. Uh, it says, and now there were men lying in wait, abiding within with her in the chamber. So, he, she's got him over one night. And he falls asleep, and there's men in the room crouched down waiting to come take him. Uh, it says, and she said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. So he's asleep in bed, and she's tied him up with these strings. And she says, basically, oh no, the Philistines are coming to make him freak out. So it says, and he break the withs as a thread of toe is broken when it touched the fire, so his strength was not known. So basically, he... Uh, so his strength was not known, yeah. So he's laying in bed, and then she says that, and he sets up, and just naturally, like, he's so strong yeah. still, the the bowstrings just break easily. So, put yourself in his perspective. There is a, a woman you know, who you like, sure, 
But then one night she's like, how do you get your special powers, right? I mean, the, let's let's make this into a more uh, tangible thing. Yeah, right? lust really is his problem. Lust is, lust is his core sin. It's his sin. main problem. That's, that's the core sin that leads to the others. Imagine there's a woman who you like who one day is like, hey, um, what's the password for like uh, your, your bank account <laughs> or something like that? And you tell her a fake one. And then you wake up in the middle of the night and she's like trying to enter. Yeah, the, the, like that passcode. The easy one's like your phone locks itself. Or your phone, yeah, your phone like, lock, and you give her a wrong one. And she's still doing it right. Like clearly, someone to not be trusted. And this is obviously infinitely more important. This is the strength God has given him, and he gives her a fake way out. And he, and she tries it. She tries mm -hmm. it. Right. It says so. After the heaven says, and Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. So she's like, you lied to me. No, but for real. He's being gaslit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did lie to her, you know. Yeah, but she's like, like, you're being so mean to me. That's literally what she's doing. She's like, you're yeah. mocking me. No, how's it actually work? Also, it, it is funny, too, that like 20 years earlier, this exact same series of events took place. Oh, with the woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, his first wife. And, and it went so well. Thing. Yeah. yeah, everything went great. Why would he ever put himself back in this situation? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going back to lust being his issue is just like the fact that he's not like immediately see you for like trying to essentially get rid of like my holy mm -hmm. yeah. know, strength. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just like never seeing her again, which is what you should be doing in the first place, he he keeps coming back. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, th there's never. He gets what's coming to him. You remember the whole thing I said about the children of Israel? They keep, like, biting the hand so much that God yep. pulls it back. This is what Samson's doing. He's biting the hand. A lot of red flags. So A lot of red flags. So anyway, he says again, Oh, well, you may you mocked me, so tell me what it really is. It says, So, so he said unto her, Well, if they bind me fast with new ropes that have never been occupied, I'll do so much strength. So... Guess Which, what? as we know, does not work because they did that to him earlier. Yeah, yeah, we already saw earlier in the story that happened, but that's what he tells her. So it says, she took new ropes, found him with, said, the Philistines be upon thee, and says, and there were liars in wait about his chamber, and he break them from off his arms like a thread. Same thing, sets up, it happens. And Delilah said unto Samson, hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head within the web. Talking about a loom. Mm -hmm. So now he's saying, oh, well, if my hair is in a loom, <laughs> like for some reason, that'll take my strength away. <laughs> Which is a really lame weakness. Uh, it says, and she fastened it with the pin and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. So he just rips the whole thing out mm -hmm. of the ground when he stands up. All right, so three times he has given her a fake one, and she has tried it every time. So what would you, as a man, do when she asks a fourth time? Obviously <laughs> propose. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely tell her the real yeah, way. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would clearly, easily. Clearly yeah. she's a keeper. Clearly this is a, a keeper, for sure, yeah. right? This is, this is the well, that's exactly, what, that's exactly what Samson thought, <laughs> because it says, And she said unto him, how canst thou say, this is her using her feminine charm, um, how, she, she had to, like, I hope for his sake, she looked really pretty. Because <laughs> if not, this is much more pathetic. <laughs> it says, it was an incel confirmed. <laughs> uh, it says, and she said unto him, behavior matches. That's true. She said unto him, how canst thou say, I love thee, when thy heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. You might say she was yapping. <laughs> to death. <laughs> to the point he's like, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> he's like, not even a 300 foxes could God's... give me a reason to live in this place. Yeah, moment. yeah, like, there's, that would be funny if I did that again, but I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he has a better reason than Jonah did. That's true. That's true. Yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Jonah's just like, I'm hot. Yep. Pity for the gourd. Yep. yep. Anyway, so um, it says, and he told her all his heart and said unto her, there hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Like we talked about earlier, one of the rules of his strength was to never cut his hair. And she, he tells her, if you cut my hair, I'll lose my strength. So guess what? So I, I am <clears throat> curious about this one and your, your thoughts on it. Do you think it's that he wasn't allowed to ever cut his hair or shave his hair? 
Okay, do you, do you mean like if he gets a buzz cut, it'll quit working? Well, that's what I'm wondering is like, is this a situation where the guy had not shaved his hair in approximately, four, like cut his hair at all in 40 years? Well, I mean, there's a lot it's of, not super there's relevant. a lot of stories like Absalom, like he would do yeah. his hair in these braids. Or, so maybe he had like a lot of braided hair yeah. or something. It does say maybe, seven weaves. Maybe so he that's can probably, cut yeah. it at a certain, it, yeah, it does say his seven, his seven locks. So he had yeah, seven so great he, locks on his head. Well, also supposedly biologically, everyone has like an upper limit of how long their hair naturally can be. Really? Yeah. It doesn't just keep growing infinitely. Ah. There's like, you know, once hmm. your hair reaches a certain like genetic length or whatever it's different for different cultures supposedly oh wow but I yeah yeah i mean uh, that that could be also completely wrong but i heard that somewhere like in a scientific context <laughs> yeah yeah so don't take it for it's gospel, just spouting but... off eugenics propaganda in the <laughs> <laughs> it came to me in a dream yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, so it, I, I think cut ever, but I could also see if it's like cut past a certain point. Yeah. You just can't have no hair yeah. or whatever. The, the seven weaves makes it sound like there's some sort of way that this has been. That done. it's all tied up or whatever. Either way, yeah. it's gone now because yeah. <laughs> that night it says, uh, And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees... That's, that's where they get you, boys. She <laughs> sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. For the first time in his life, he gets himself into a dumb situation, calls on God, and God says, not this time. That one too many. God's like, you had literally one You meal. had one job. Don't <laughs> mess with the Nazarite stuff. So he tells her, oh, if you get rid of my Nazarite stuff, I'll lose my power. Yeah, like, yeah. like sure... If if someone was held down and had their hair cut, it's not like they broke the vow, right? Yeah. But the reason his hair's cut is because he told her, oh, if you cut my hair. He was playing loose with it. He yeah. let this happen. Yeah, this is his doing. Similar to pretty much everything else that's happened to he him. He gave all of his most important state secrets, if you will, to a unregistered foreign agent to whom he was not married. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. it, bad plan. Who has frequently attempted to take it previously. Over and over again. Yeah, yeah. she keeps trying passwords. And he's like, ah, it's this one. Sam Samson was <laughs> What do you mean you got into it? Yeah. He, he is a bit of a himbo. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's putting it lightly. Yeah. But yeah, he's a himbo. Um, it says, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he whilst not, and he wist not, or knew not, that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put, put out his and eyes. put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. And they they, they had him push a millstone because even though like the the super strength comes from God, I mean he's still, still a, he's still a dude. guy, he's yeah. still like a man, right? He's still a tough man. So, so they're like you're gonna you're gonna push a millstone, which would normally be a donkey's job. Yep. The giant the things you see in movies like the giant yeah. turn wheel that people push around a circle. They blind him, they, they pluck out his eyes, and they make him push one of those. He becomes an attraction. Like, yeah. oh look, this was once the great leader of, of the Israelites' people, but look at him now. He's an animal. He's, yeah. he's a blind animal who grinds our wheat for us, because that's, that's what it is. So now, not only has Samson allowed himself to be diminished to this, he's allowed the people of God to be diminished to this. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be the representative of God's capability to the Israelites, and now... He is an animal who plows grain for the Philistines. Mm -hmm. That's what he's allowed himself to become. So we don't exactly get uh, a long time period of how long he was in this situation of stock, basically, for them. Uh, but we see how far he's fallen. He's fallen from someone who was taught the ways of God, someone who was uh, supposed to be a righteous man, a leader with all the strength he could ever need, and now he's, he's a mule for, for the people that he was supposed to save his, his own people from. Without... A intended pun of the millstone. He really is at his rock bottom at this point. Yes. Like yeah. It, 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 in a genuine, almost addict sense of like, if, if we're talking about lust being his issues, like his addiction has gotten him to a rock bottom. Mm. They yeah. do make yeah. a a rather important mistake though in his captivity, which is that they don't continue cutting his hair off. Yeah. So it actually says, uh, "How be it? The hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven." Um, now that's mentioned. I, obviously, it doesn't necessarily mean he's getting his. Mojo it doesn't back. mean he's getting his strength back, but it is kind of a picture of I think him starting to come back. Yeah. Like 
when you get to rock bottom, there's not much farther to drop, right? You can only look up. So it seems like in this situation, he's starting to think, what a fool I've been. My opinion is that that, that phrase wouldn't be in there if it weren't symbolic of something. Yes, exactly. And it says, Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their god. Again, they worship Dagon and tell a lot of... A lot of blood sacrifice, yeah. killing stuff, all that. So they're having this big party for Dagon. And it says, And to rejoice, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson our enemy into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. So now they're having a giant festival for Dagon, uh, this false god, this, uh, this like evil false god. And Samson's the main attraction. Look at look at look at what their God, the pity yep. God of the Israelites, did. Look at what Yahweh did. Right? They even say, "Come out and perform for us." Like they're, yeah. they're like, "Come yeah. put on a show." Look look at what a mockery we've made of the supposed God of Israel. Like it, it shows not only like again Samson ruining his own reputation, but how low he's allowed the reputation of God to be among these people. That he's he's a side act for mm. whatever. He's he's a juggling monkey, and it says, <clears throat> um, and it came to pass. When their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house, and he made them sport, and they set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand. So there's like his guide, uh, his guide who's taking it, because remember, Samson's blind. The guide is taking him to the front room, basically, of this giant temple, this giant house that they're in to worship Dagon. And it says that Samson says to the lad, Suffer me that I may fill the, pil the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. So the lad takes him and puts him between the pillars of the house. Again, he's blind. He can't see, but he can hear everything that's going on. And it says, Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men, men and women, mm -hmm. that beheld while Samson made sport. So there's 3,000 people in this house. So house it's like a temple a giant stadium you can imagine yeah. almost and it has these massive pillars three thousand people and they're all pointing and laughing at him right look what our god has done for us that the pity god of the israelites this was their warrior and now look at him so he's standing there between the pillars and says and samson called unto the lord and said O lord god remember me i pray thee and strengthen me i pray thee only this once O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. So he's saying, just, I, I know I've messed up. I'm here in this situation. One more time. Give me the strength to do what I should have been doing this whole time. <laughs> and it says, And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol in the burying place of Manoah his father. Mm -hmm. And he judged Israel twenty years. And that's it. That's the yep. end of the story of Samson. So here we have the picture of a guy who messed up time and time again. He was given great grace by God, like strength that hasn't been seen anywhere else in the Bible. There's instances of miraculous moments of strength. Like, for example, when Elijah is given the, the speed to outrun the chariot yeah. when uh, Jezebel is chasing him. Like, there's quick moments of it. But we see here that Israel is such in a bad place. Samson was put in a position, if you just follow what I did, what, what I need you to, you will be the strongest man who has ever lived. But not only that, you will be the ruler over your own people, and you will be the one to deliver them out of the hand of the enemy. Think about how incredible of an honor that is, right? Not only are you God's number one guy, but you save your family's people, right? You have your ruler over that same people, a just ruler, but a ruler nonetheless, as much of a ruler as the judges were, and you will be the strongest man to ever live. And he saw all of that, and he kept spitting on it over and over. Well, I can also use it to get clothes. I can also use it to pick fights. I can get women. I can, I can get women, exactly. He uses it for all of the things that are right in front of him that he doesn't see the better picture, the bigger picture. And eventually, 
God allows him to keep making mistakes over and over, and eventually he winds up exactly where he was asking for, as a mule at the foot of the Philistines. But in his final moments, he has that recognition. He has that picture of, I should have been doing this from the start, and now with my last moments, I'm going to do something that matters. He pushes down the pillars. It says he slew more with his death than he did in his life. And there is a beautiful picture of redemption at the last seconds, of pushing down the pillars of, of because after this it says, um, the next story, chapter 17 begins with the story of Micah, the Philistines aren't as much as a problem as they were previously. So, like all the leaders were in the house that Samson took down, right? Like there was a lot of good that was done by Samson there in the end, but it cost him his life. It took a lot of hardship for him to, him to get there when if he hadn't had done the stuff he did in life, imagine how amazing the story of Samson would be if it was someone with the strength of Samson and the wisdom of Samuel mm -hmm. or the patience of David or what have yeah. you. Like a wise, mighty king. He would be someone who is looked back at the ages as one of the, the greatest figures in the Bible. He'd be in the conversation with people like David or yep. Elijah or what have you. But no, Samson is the horny kid who kept getting into trouble and kept causing issues. And that's forever his legacy. However, there is that moment in the end. And what I really love about it that gets overlooked a lot is the last verse when it says his brothers took him and buried him with his father. Even though he died, even though the suffering happened, there's still the recognition of he's placed back where he was supposed to be. Buried alongside his righteous father. He judged Israel 20 years. If he hadn't have gone down this path, he could have judged Israel a lot longer. He yep. could have, I mean, like the strongest man to ever live. Who, no telling how long that guy could have been in the position he was. But he wasted it. Well, in, in terms of the, you know, the, the, the will of God in a sense of choosing Samson, you know, it... it it was unfortunate that he made the choices he did, but in the end goal, his mistakes led not as high, but nearly as high as that final act mm -hmm. of his elimination of the Philistines. So, like, you know, in that regard, there's no way of knowing how his impact would have been in that element of his life against the Philistines had he been more of a wise mm. or, you know, had more humility of in, in his character. Yeah. But despite you know, all the, the wrongs he did, those wrongs still, though they were, you know, some, some tragic ends that people, you know, per se, maybe not should have mm -hmm. met those ends in that mm -hmm. way, they still got toward the end goal of what was then added to at the end of the great act that was, you know, more than anything in his life. Mm -hmm. But all of those acts, for, for better or for worse, ended up being for the good of his people. Yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah. you know, an interesting way to look at, you know... The, it's the, interesting how even though Samson suffered by his choices, God didn't allow the people to suffer yeah. because of Samson's choices. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you, you might ask, you know, why pick a guy like Samson? And it's like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Samson did do what he was supposed to do. Yeah, the job, the the job happened. Like, the job after, did yeah. get done. The, the slavers were destroyed effectively, right? Like the Philistines, like sure, they're mentioned after this, but this time of captivity I mean, they're, they're was still, taken from them. Yeah, this is this is the beginning of the end for yeah, them. Yeah, this is the beginning of the end for them. Like They should come up with stories of David and stuff like we mentioned, but Israel's not in the captivity they were because of what Samson did. Like God's objective was still achieved. Mm -hmm. Samson just went through a lot more suffering than he would have had to if he just stuck by by what yeah. was needed. And I mean, that's that's what so many of the stories end up being at the end of the day, is like, you could have gotten this done a lot cleaner. If yeah, you just yeah. followed a lot. That's true. the yeah. rules. I mean, look, look at the classic one of the Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. Wandering the desert 40 years to wind up where you were supposed to be 40 years ago. And it's yeah. like a total of 400 miles you had to cover. Yep, and a lot of, a lot of hardship that had to happen like, when you could have just... Canaan was yours, mm -hmm. right? Um... But again, silly, like like silly like any other story in the Old Testament, it is I believe the the reason the stories are related to us, especially in the the manner that they relate to us, I believe is a picture for us now, right? Yeah. Like sure, the laws, the the particulars, like we never have to worry about judges and its effect on us in our current lives, right? But the way the stories are conveyed is for us, the church, us in the modern age to have. And what we see here is someone who was given great, great respect by God and was given an opportunity to be something and he kept squandering it. And yes, in the end, redemption was still allowed, but so much hardship could have been saved if he had just done what he was supposed to. It's not to say that there's ever a point where you can't come back to God, but why put yourself in a position where you have to come back in the first place when you were already there to begin with? 
Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. That's the story of Samson. Yep. It's a good story. Good story. Oh, it's a great story. Like, yeah. I, it, it's very clear why this is yeah. one of the Bible stories that everyone knows. It's so yeah. so unique, so fleshed out. Like you can see different parts of it. And again, like we talked about at the beginning about like children's stories and stuff. Like it's easy to tell this story to kids and like. Well, I remember as a kid, the the details of like, you know, oh, we went and saw Harlot in the city and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was just said um, he was with people he shouldn't have, you know, stuff yeah. like that. But it's easy to get across to kids. This is someone who was blessed. You know, they were put in a great position and he misused it. And, you know, like bad things happened because he started doing bad things. Like it's easy for a kid to get across. But as we grow up, we can kind of see the idea of he had this birthright. He had this, this destiny almost that he kept pushing back in, in want of what was right before him instead of the greater picture. Like anything else in the Bible, there is both the message and the moral of what needs to be said. It's very easy to understand, but if you want to get into it, it is so much to get into. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, the Bible as a whole. Like the, the Bible is like, Jesus loves you. He died for you. Be saved. And then if you get into it, it is a lifetime of scratching yeah. the surface. Yeah. 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 There's the very simple... You know, here's what you need to know. Mm -hmm. And then when you you dive in, you're like, oh, this is actually the greatest story ever told. Yeah. yeah. Like there's, there's, there's a yeah, reason yeah. that's the... When you view <laughs> the Bible as, like, not only mankind and us now, but this entire history of humanity that leads to Jesus and then everything mm -hmm. that comes after everything meant for us now, yeah, there's a reason it's called the greatest story yeah. ever told. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, if you're looking at it from the perspective of somebody who's not necessarily a believer, like, you can even at least see how all of these different threads of just, like, you know, cumulative human wisdom mm -hmm. being brought together, you know, through, you know, if you are a believer, through, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, holy means, and if you're not, you know, even if you're willing to engage with mm -hmm. it, you can still take away all of these valuable lessons because oh, yeah. it just is, you know, proof is in the writing that they are still applicable today just as much as they were thousands of years ago. Well, I mean, like anyone, you know, believer or otherwise can look at this story and be like, yeah, someone was given a great opportunity and kept squandering it. And it's mm -hmm. like, sure, they, they got it in the end, but they didn't have to suffer as hard as they did to get it. Like, yeah, that could, that, that's a good moral to take away from any story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, humility goes a long way. Humility goes a very long way. And the judges are interesting because, like, they are given a specific amount of, like, um, um, agency, so to speak, in, in, like, the country at the time. And it's interesting to see how they mess up. Most of them aren't given as much depth uh, into, like, how their life went as Samson. So most of the time it's assumed that they were more righteous, more upright. Like, so, like, sometimes we are like Samuel. We see a lot of Samuel's thoughts and stuff like that. But characters like Ehud, for example. Like, he just shows up pretty quick and is gone the next. Same with Deborah and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of the time it's, it's kind of written off as, oh, Samson was the bad one. But the, there was no perfect judge, so to speak. I, I will say Samson's likely the worst yeah. one from what I can remember. It unless is I'm also, forgetting one. But. It is also crazy reading through it again. And, you know, all of these super prominent characters that you remember from Sunday school, from childhood and all that, mm -hmm. a lot of them show up for like four chapters. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah. The, these chapters, 13 through 16 is all that Samson's mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I like, so easily miss it. He gets mentioned later, like the, like David will be talking about like, oh, the stories of Samson, like the, you know, they'll reference yeah. his stories, but that is his story. There was a, uh, God, which one was it? Um, I was reading one thing that suggested that uh, he also might be referenced as uh, a character named Badan. Who, which mm. might come from Ben Dan um, mm. in another book, but I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head, which tries to Yeah, the, like the, the, the prophets and, you know, the disciples, like everyone through the Bible, they read the scriptures. You yeah. Know, they knew what was there. Um, the, what's the line Paul said? When Paul's writing to Timothy and he says, bring to me the letters and all this, but especially the parchments, the parchments are the Old Testament. Yeah. He's, he's telling Timothy to bring him the Bible. So like they knew the stories and in their writings, they'd often reference them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The Bible, there's something like, I remember seeing a chart of it before. There's something like 3000 cross references in the Bible of one character, both mm. forward and backward. So 3000 instances of Someone either in the early parts saying there will come a man to do this that happens later. And to keep in mind, these are 66 different authors mm -hmm. who never spoke to each other. It's not like they planned this out, right? Um, or 
there's references of people later on writing about people that have come before and written stuff. So you ever see it's almost one? like it's divine or so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see the one of just revelation? Yeah, yeah, that's a whole. <laughs> it is insane. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason revelation yeah, says the. Yeah, and there's a reason we haven't. Does. There's a reason we haven't talked about it on this show. I, I, know, I, know, I know people who have spent like a decade just in research of revelations who are like, I don't know if I know enough to talk about it. Uh, well, okay, talk about. It. I don't know if I know enough to definitively say stuff about it. Yeah. We yeah. in college in my religious studies program would write entire yeah, minimum five page but usually five to 15 page papers on a verse yeah <laughs> like on a verse it, or it, maybe it, it, i mean a chapter was going to be like a term paper it, and you were you were touching like a singular theme <laughs> it really is uh like the final boss <laughs> of, of like um, I know I know the Bible. I can comprehend this pretty well. All right. Well, here yeah. seven seals, the tribulation, post tribulation, <laughs> the period, anybody, the suffering, the rapture, the, the angels, the seals. Yeah, yeah. Anybody have who, fun. Who yeah. claims to be able to tell you what revelation means? Yeah, there, is lying. There, there's people who have like good ideas, yeah. right? Like you know from the research they've done, but I don't even think I've met someone who's like I, other than cult leaders who are like I know what it means. Exactly. Yeah, like, for a hundred percent. Yeah, there, anybody who tells you that the world is going to end on May twenty second or something because the Book of Revelation is like time. no. <laughs> uh, I have no interest in ever even attempting to because I'm still trying to wrap my head around the whirling wheel of flaming foxes. Oh, Thrones? Oh, no, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Biblically accurate the foxes. foxes Biblically yeah. accurate foxes. And, and what, the beautiful thing about the Bible is, like, um, to be a Christian, you don't need to understand. No. All you need to be a Christian is Christ loves you, died for you, yeah. accept him, right? And what's so beautiful about the Bible is that someone who has read Revelation for 20 years and someone who just got that part of it uh, that I just said, they're both Christians of the same magnitude. No one is better in the eyes of God, of course. That said, um, one of them should probably be the one teaching, and one of them should probably that, be the one that's listening. That's correct, that's correct. <laughs> uh, on earth, there's yeah. a difference of how we relegate <laughs> teachers and stuff. But we're all all children of God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And that was the story of Samson. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for being here and watching. Again, apologies for the long delay, all my fault, as mentioned. Uh, but we'll be getting back into the swing of things soon. But for this kickoff episode, or re-kickoff episode, I hope that you all enjoyed. Yes. Isaiah is taking a lot of flack for it. Uh, he is a very humble man, and we appreciate his time. Uh, <laughs> just to be clear, you, know, you don't have to apologize for having a, a life and a career. <laughs> sir uh, <laughs> yes I do I don't know how to launch <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I feel that but yes thank you guys for watching uh, this is you know I'm, I'm super excited to be getting back into this show mm -hmm. I think this is some of the most important work I do I, I believe you feel the same way mm -hmm. of course um no, oh, absolutely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Say it. What we talk about? It's, yeah. it's one of my favorites, just purely from the fact that you know I, I come from having like multitudes of like Christian like schooling, but never to the level of either of you two. And so it's interesting coming at it with quote unquote fresh eyes, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, kind of re-engaging with these stories for the first time in a long time, and being able to contribute that to the conversation is really yeah. enjoyable. So. It's and I I appreciate having you here because it's nice to have somebody who can ask those questions and yeah. sort of bridge the gap between somebody who maybe was raised in it and understands, you know, the basics of Jesus loves you, love Jesus, good. Mm -hmm. And then on to the, the stuff we reach in these shows. Yeah. Because I think that's good for the audience as well, who maybe, who isn't here to sit and go, wait, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, that's, I, I think, you know, I, I'm super excited to have the show back and I hope that all of you guys have considered it worth the wait and aren't too upset with us for being several months late. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, with all of that said, uh, Isaiah, would you like to say who you are and what you do in case anybody somehow doesn't know? In case that happened, which... <laughs> I mean, I guess this is a cool place to come in on, but whew, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I am Isaiah, uh, also known as Windagoon. I make YouTube videos on YouTube uh, <laughs> under the channel Windagoon, but uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, thank you all so much for being here. It really does mean the world. And you want to give people who might not have seen uh, seen your face so much before a little... Sure, yeah. So I'm the other half of the lore launch that people rarely see. My name is also Aiden, spelled the same way. Uh, you know, we're, believe it or not, not the same person, shockingly enough. Uh, be terrifying. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all the film side, but, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, that's half of the lore lodge. And if you're uh, if you're new to us from this show, uh, you know, feel free to check us out. We have this guy on on occasion. Uh, it's a little bit of a different content style, but you might enjoy it. But I'll let you kind of finish that all off. Sure. Yeah, and of course, I'm Aiden Mattis. I'm the host of The Lore Lodge. I'm the co-host of this show. And I am just very grateful to be surrounded by the people I work with and the audience that we have. So thank you guys so much for watching, for tuning back in after all this time. And we will see you on the next one. Next. Bye. <laughs> Pointed at stuff, yeah. <laughs>